Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us again uh, today. I know it's a surprise, but it's another webinar and I'm wearing another blue shirt. Uh, and Bill and I didn't coordinate, but he has a blue shirt on too. So it matches us in the background, which is always part of the goal. So <laughs> um, super excited about this presentation. It's different than what we've done in the past in many ways. Um, I'm excited because this, you know, I've known Bill for 20, it feels over 20 years yeah. actually. Um, and, and Bill was actually one of the first people I met that came to me with a business that was a dot-com business. Yeah, you know? right. and, and I was super excited. It's dating both of us. What's that? That's dating both of us. That's dot true. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Dot-com. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, I've watched the, his business evolve over time and for that matter, Bill too. And, and uh, I've lost track of time, not good with this, but within the last 12 months, Bill and I started talking about a new idea he had and called the Polaris Institute, which I'll let him talk about it. But what was super notable to me was the enthusiasm level um, and enthusiasm in a way I hadn't seen in a long time. And so uh, I know is, is the business that we're in watching entrepreneurs, one of the cornerstones of success and happiness is passion. And you have to be passionate about what you do. And Bill's super passionate about this. I don't know that I've ever seen you this passionate and excited before. So, um, and, and the, you know, the topic, which is changing how you look at money problems and opportunities uh, is, is, doesn't even do it justice what we're talking about really. Right, right. And, and if I think that the way I look at it is how to change problems and to find new opportunities in general. And the money piece is a super straightforward top topic for to, to use as a, a great analogy. Um, I myself went through their inaugural uh, retreat yep. the, uh, two weeks ago here in Columbus and um, folks from all around the Midwest. Pretty, yep. And it was to people I didn't know. Um, and it was fantastic from the standpoint of opening my eyes to a different way to look at the world and look at myself for that matter. Um, and really begin to develop a roadmap for the change that I want in my own life. Um, and, and also, you know, you can see this happening that there'll be a community of folks that are engaged in, in this process. So, um, so the point is that Bill's excited and passionate. I'm excited about, uh, about my own journey in this process. And I think it's meaningful for, for you to hear this in, I think, you know, maybe this is, and Bill and I really haven't spent much time talking about exactly what we're talking about because we've known each other so long, but I think this is particularly appropriate for entrepreneurs. I think this is uniquely uh, valuable for entrepreneurs. And so uh, from here, I'll let you take it over. Okay. And um, just your, your audience is there and we're good to go. Yeah. So let me walk through uh, a little, a few slides here. There'll be some foundational scientific facts. Uh, some of which will not feel scientific to you. They may not feel real uh, based on your experience, but um, I can promise you they are, and we'll be able to prove that as we go along here. So let me put up a little PowerPoint, and we'll walk through some slides. Um, let me put that here. So this will be foundational to give you the idea of what it is the Polaris Institute is all about and what the process is that uh, Randy's talking about that we started taking people through a couple of weeks ago. The point of this is to rewire, we would say rewire remarkable, but it's rewiring your brain to rewire your life, science-based approach to life, life optimization. But let me show you exactly what that looks like. Um, go to this, go to this slide. Let me give you a couple of facts about your brain. First is what your brain's primary job is. What is job number one? And that is based on the way our brains were wired prehistorically. You know, we, we didn't always live in cities. We didn't always drive around in cars. Uh, we grew up in a world that was very scary, full of things that were faster than us, meaner than us, wanted to eat us. And really, our brain is the only competitive advantage we have in the wild. We're slower, we're rounder, we're softer. Everything else is faster, stronger, and sharper. So how did we survive as a species? We survived by outsmarting everything, right? Anticipating what could go wrong. We plan what happened yesterday to do it better tomorrow. So really, that's our brain's primary job is to 
keep us safe, keep us alive so that we can reproduce and carry on the species. That's job number one. If it accomplishes that, it's done its job from a large macro standpoint. So one of the things to note there is that if it does that by keeping us dissatisfied or nervous or anxious or scanning for threats or whatever, still job well done. It got us through that. It doesn't necessarily do it by trying to make us happy and satisfied. So job number one is for our brain to keep us safe, alive, so we can reproduce and carry on the species. There's a challenge, and this is what got me excited about this a few years ago, was I started doing some research into this, and I found there was a huge challenge that our brain comes with. The brain that keeps us safe, anticipates everything that can go wrong, uses a ton of energy. As an adult, just sitting here, our brain is 2% of our body weight, but it's using 20% of our body's energy. If you're a child and you're growing up, your brain is using 60% of your body's energy. So your brain uses a lot of energy when it's running. The challenge is, is that when we grew up in the savanna or the jungle and our brain was evolving to keep us safe, it didn't have a lot of energy. It wasn't like we had you know, all the food we could ever eat. And today, in fact, this is known in the world chess uh, uh, world, in the chess world, because grandmasters in world chess championship tournaments eat 6,000 calories a day and still lose weight sitting in a chair. Just sitting there, Somewhere. turning your brain on, you will starve to death. Literally uh, on the right there, the picture is from the 1984 World Chess Championships. They were canceled mid-tournament. There is no 1984 World Chess Champion because Anatoly Karpov, the champion at the time, had lost so much weight during the tournament they thought he was going to die. It's unbelievable. It's like, stop, we're stopping this right now. It's unbelievable. You cannot eat enough food. If your brain is fully engaged, you can't eat enough food. Huh. So the challenge there is that your brain is the thing that keeps you alive yeah. and your biggest threat. Yeah. So what's the solution? So evolution came up with a honestly amazing solution. And that creates some of the challenges you're gonna have <laughs> with this idea today and the opportunity that we're based on this whole program on. The solution is, and this is something that's really come to light. You can, you can uh, look at some great TED talks on this, Lisa Feldman Barrett or Milseth. Scientists have discovered with MRI technology that our brains actually create reality for us more than take it in. Taking in and processing things is expensive. Takes a lot of energy. What is that? What's going on? If your brain already knows something, what it's figured out is like, I just use that for memory. Right. I know what a pen is. I don't have to keep what is this thing? How does it work? It's a pen. So what your brain is doing over the course of your life is learning what everything is so that it can use that for memory going forward. Once it learns what walking is, once it learns what a fork is, once it learns what an apple is, it doesn't revisit that because that's expensive from an energy standpoint. So right? this is why people become creatures of habit. Exactly. Right. They, they it's efficient. Know. Right. Hence my blue shirt. That I know <laughs> right. <laughs> right. One less thing to think about, right? right. And one right. less thing to process and use energy. Got it. Okay. So as you get to be an adult, you know just about everything. Your brain's seen almost everything. Now there will be surprises that sure. you're down the road, right. but you don't have to worry about anymore what is a car, what is traffic, right. what is sunlight. You just know. Right. So this idea, though, that you're creating your reality more than taking it in. Yeah, people yeah. can have a problem with that, sure. yeah. right? It's like, uh, <laughs> I'm crossed, I'm sitting at a table, I know this is the table. Well, but your brain, is your brain creating that? So we have a little experiment here that we use to prove this to people. So I'm gonna prove to everybody right now watching this that you are not seeing reality, that in fact, you're creating reality. It's gonna feel a little weird. So there's an image on the screen as a kind of a checkerboard pattern with two squares that are marked A and B. And the question we always ask everyone is, are those two squares the same shade of gray? Of course, the answer is no, no, they're not. They're not at all, right? A is darker and B is lighter. Well, you might guess that I'm gonna do something here. When we put a, a box up on either side of them that connects them together, you'll see that they are actually the exact same color. And, and I struggle with this <laughs> uh, it, it, a lot, actually. Yeah. This, I saw this presentation like, what? a few weeks ago and I'm like, okay, now Bill really has lost it. And, then all of a sudden he mailed me this card. I mean, this is the actual card that you're looking at yep. and it looks exactly the same as what you're seeing. And then you close it and look at the back, I don't know if you can see it, but without the electronics, it's like, holy smokes, they're both exactly the same color. Yeah. So it, I still can't explain it, but my brain definitely is telling me box B is a different color than box A until I close it and there's no like, you know, there's nothing in there that's making this happen. <laughs> so like I, I can't I, I can't explain it other than simply saying it's true. Right. 
we, we printed these cards because so many people were just convinced that I would like, if I go back, that he's doing something, they're looking at the screen, he's trying to change something with a, with a computer trick, but there's no computer trick. There's no computer trick. That's for sure. So a couple of things here. What's happening is, is you're seeing them as different colors when there is context around it. Your brain is adding lots of other things in that it knows, right? It's like, oh, I'm mean, a shadow when there's a cylinder and it's a checkerboard. And, so your brain is adding things and that's the proof that it's creating this reality for you when all those other things go away and there's just the two boxes well okay that's what you see so this idea that there's this sort of bias built into what you're seeing based on what your brain is expecting to see is weird um it has a lot of implications but it actually is a huge opportunity because you can actually change things uh, based on that. So what's happening here is that your brain is predicting reality from memories. It already has. This one is one that we all pretty much share. We all have a similar idea of what a checkerboard pattern is and light and so on. But if you project, if you add this in, think of something like, what is our memory of hugs or sunlight or money, right? We all learn things differently. Is money a reward? Is money you know, something you get because you're just you or something you get because you didn't work. And so money has its own perspective. Sunlight, is sunlight dangerous? Right. Or right. Is sunlight right. wonderful, right. right? So, wow, okay, I have different views of all those things. Yeah. And I'm holding on to them as tightly as I'm holding on to the fact that that may be a different. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, and, and what, what we do for a living with so many of our clients, yeah, it's funny because uh, people say, you know, I want to have a, a company that feels like a family. And my first reaction is like, ooh, that doesn't sound very good. With the, way, the way I grew up, like that would be dysfunctional, right? And be a problem. But that's my memory right. and reaction, you know, to it. And different than my current family, to, for full disclosure, in case any of the kids are watching. Um, but that, that's, that, I can't help it when somebody said, I want to want to feel like a family. Oh, boy, not everybody feels great about their family growing up. And, right. You know, right. What is family? Right? What is family? Right. What is a mother? What is a father? What is exactly. that? Well, everything was love. Right. <laughs> All of us have our own flavor. Right. Okay. So you can imagine then that that could come in conflict with other people. Sure. Right. Uh, they view it as it's completely different than you and you both hold on to it. It's, it's total reality. Right. It is true. You can't right. argue with it, but you can. Right. right. That's right. So, um, so this then has lots of implications for interacting with other people and how you see the world and what you think things need to be. Uh, one of the quick little side notes just related to the world we live in these days is this A and B is a bias, right? It's a, you're seeing that the way your brain wants to see it based on its own memories, its own experience in life. And we know that it's not really, really true. So you can see that our brains are wired for bias. Yeah. So whatever you believe, political spectrum, religion, money, it doesn't matter. You just, we have to accept that we have bias. Yes, we just do. Speaking of which, um, the bias that I had, I thought I would remember to tell everybody to put your questions in the chat, but I just realized that I didn't. So we're gonna take questions, um, but put them in the chat, please. So there's a bias for you. But okay, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, let's move on and just kind of finish this up. So the implications of this is that your reality has worked if you're watching this, you're alive, your brain's kept you alive, helped you avoid all kinds of dangers, but it may not line up with what you want to do in life. Uh, and your version of reality may not re line up with other people's, yeah. right? Um, this idea of lining up with what you want to do in life is really where we're focusing at Polaris Institute, right? It's like, I want to work on some things and I may have blind spots that are telling me I can't or I must or whatever, right? So if I could rewire that, what would that unlock for me? What could I, what could I change? Because what happens is, is one last thing on your brain learning and then projecting from memory. Once your brain learns something, what a pen is, how to walk, it doesn't revisit it. And it doesn't uninstall it on its own. Hmm. So something you learned at eight years old, or you know, I learned a lot about money when I was a teenager, you get a job, then you can buy the tennis shoes you want, get the haircut you want. Okay, that formed money uh, for me. And that carried on. Okay. So 30 or 40 years later, I still have the same view of money that was appropriate at 16. It may not be appropriate at 56. Right. right. So that's the other thing is, is that if they don't get uninstalled unless you do some work on it. Right. Yeah. I know for me, uh, one of the ahas through my experience with you is that was rewired that exercise isn't fun for me, you know, and, and that's, that was a bias based on, um, uh, you know, years of doing it. And it's and two weeks ago, like, 
boy, I need to rethink that. You know, that, that, that how do I change the bias and exercise is fun. Mm -hmm. um, and it's meaningful for a variety of reasons, but it was like, I didn't realize what a bias that was. Because when I wake up in the morning to exercise, my first thought is, that's not fun. Right, right. And that's that's a struggle. And, a fact, and it's a fact, it's yeah. not fun. Yeah, it's a fact to me. Right? You don't feel like it's an opinion. You feel like, well, that's it's just not fun. Whereas the guy, you know, in the lane next to me, I was talking to him yesterday, and, he swam for 45 minutes and, and I'm like, that's a long time. He goes, what's well, really fun? I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, and you get into a lot of nuanced stuff too, because for me, formal exercise is not fun. I don't like going to a gym and doing a routine workout on the, but activity is fun. And I, I've learned for me, being out of breath is fun. Being out of breath for me feels like my brother and I running in the backyard, right. tackling. Oh, okay. So it's sort of like even aspects of it that are fun and other pieces are not. <laughs> so drilling into it, you can really yeah. go, well, that's the fun part. That's the part I don't like. Got it. So, okay. um, so the opportunity then that we're working on at the Polaris Institute that you've talked about and we want to explore today is that your, your reality coming from your memory means you can change your life by changing those memories, um, rewiring them. You can edit, delete, add perspectives and change things. But the last thing I want to put up here is that it's, I'm not saying it's easy, right? It's simple, but not easy. Yeah, that was in our retreat, you know, as, as all of us for the first time, there were eight of us or mm -hmm. something, is that right? Um, and it was interesting that everybody was sharing their experiences around uh, what, what they learned. And to a person basically said in their own words that this is really straightforward and simple, but boy, it, it's simply not going to be it's not going to be easy. Correct. And, yeah. and so, um, and which almost makes it more difficult in some respects, because in, in this is my own experience. I'll say that um, because it is so straightforward, like there's a part of me saying, why isn't it easy? Mm -hmm. But it isn't easy, you know? And, and so that's, and, and this is where I've gotten, I've come full, full circle around, but like it's become very obvious to me that it really is rewiring your brain. It, 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 and, and I think that as you learn how to rewire your brain, mm -hmm. it becomes simple and easy. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. It's like any other thing. <clears throat> when you first learned it, it's very difficult. Right. In right. fact, the, the, the last slide I have up here has some things that I think are examples of it that we can relate to. Learning to Samba, right? Like, I don't know if I even can move that way in the beginning, right? right? It's like, it's impossible. There's no way. Um, now, if I had already done a lot of dance in my life, if I knew how to rumba and waltz, well, maybe samba isn't such a long, right. but if it's from nothing, that's a lot. So, um, and, and there's, there's a funny one. I have the fork image up there because we can relate to using a fork. We use forks all day long. Never give it a thought. It's automatic. Use a fork. But what if you wanted to change how you use a fork? Huh? Well, I know I could do that. It would just take a long time. I'd have to keep using the other hand. I'd keep wanting to go back and I'd have to keep finding it. So that's an example of the same sort of rewiring that you can see in your, with your hands with a fork. That's the same as how you feel about people in traffic or whether you think how you respond when the market goes up or down. Right. Those are the same kinds of rewiring. We're just kind of more used to thinking about them in physical terms, but it's exactly the same process. Right. And in some respects, um, some of these habits, some of these these biases are so embedded in you, you just don't realize. Totally automatic. Yeah, totally automatic. It's like you don't know how you walk. Correct. Right. Yeah. In fact, this well, is I know something... I walk funny, but I don't know how I walk. But <laughs> right. it, it's a funny walk. I know that. So I this actually is a journey I started about five or six years ago with a physical issue. I had a running problem. And I, I thought my running career was over. And I went to a, a whole clinic and they said, you've got to change your gait. Well, I don't even, didn't even know I had a gait, like, like a specific, like we all have a running gait. Right. Do you remember learning it? No. No. So again, that's from memory. So yeah. running is just a thing I do that I don't even know how I do it. My brain does from memory, right? Well, it has some, had some problems. It was not perfect. It was inconsistencies. There were, you know, inefficiencies in there that were magnified when I started really running a lot. It worked fine to run from the parking lot out of the rain or, you know, whatever, run as a kid, but you start running marathons, all of a sudden those things pop up. So I had to learn a new running gait, completely different way to land and strike. It's like, this is really clumsy. It took a year. And I, what I realized during the course of that year was it wasn't learning, wasn't a leg project, it right. was a brain right. project. Right. 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 So it was like, oh, I can rewire that. What else is possible? So that was yeah. kind of my beginning journey was a physical activity like 
things. And through that process, did they, was this all self-discovery on, was it a brain issue or is there, did you have pointers to help you? Um, I had, I, I've been doing a lot of research on other things in my life I wasn't happy with, just like I wasn't happy with my running yeah. and more around emotional issues, which is probably what we're talking about here, rewiring these yeah. emotional things yeah. versus physical movement, but same process. But so I wasn't, you know, one of the challenges that a lot of entrepreneurs have, and I had one too, was around reaching finish lines and not finding the satisfaction waiting there for you that you yeah. expected. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, well, huh. That was a long project. And I thought when I got here, everything would be, I guess I didn't do a big enough one, right? I guess yeah, I didn't right. do, I got to do yeah. enough. So that was one of the things I was wrestling with too, more of a life stage issue. It's like, well, now what, you know? So can you, can you talk a little bit about, because one of my aha moments is this, the amount of available help for within medicine. So you have, you have, you know, physical uh, medicine, if something goes wrong and, yeah. and medicine goes, you know, preventative. So talk through about, why Polaris Institute is so different. And by the way, this is not a slide that we did, but it just was one of my aha moments when, when Bill was explaining, uh, Bill and Anna were explaining Polaris Institute to me, the fundamental premise of why they're so different um, and why, why this is special. So I'll do, I don't have the box in front of it, but I'll just pretend we have a box here. We divide this into four quadrants, right? And across the top, write physical and mental. And on the left side, you can write uh, growth and repair. And what we've uncovered is that in the repair box down here, when things are broken, you want to get better. There is a whole part of our world focused on mental repair, right? Sort of psychologists, psychiatrists helping us with issues that we're broken and we need to get better. Physical repair, you know, hospitals, yeah. doctors, med medicine, and so on. There's also a huge focus in our world on mental, I'm sorry, physical improvement. Gyms, workout, right? We're all, we all know about that but there isn't a big focus on mental improvement. No one says, people who are here say, I want to get in better aerobic shape. I want to be better. I want to have more balance. I want to, I want to eat better. Do we walk around going, you know, I think I want to get better at love. I think I want to be a bet. Now we say that, but there's no program. Right. There's no big, so this is where we think we need to live. And, and, and it's different than academics because academics mm -hmm. is really about learning information. Correct. Uh, maybe learning some new skills, but it's not what, you know, for me it was, well, I'm learning how to be better at love, but also I'm learning how to make my brain grow. Correct. You know, that that was, the, you know, and I already have an enormous head to begin with. So, but I'm like, wow, I have unlimited, <laughs> not unlimited, but huge potential. Um, but that's like, okay, that's right. There's nobody out there who's really teaching you how to help grow your brain. And I go back to the grandmasters chess champion. Mm -hmm. Those folks, because of the nature of the game they're playing, yes, they're brain was growing naturally. Yep. It wasn't a deliberate, like they're going, I don't, probably not, who knows? I don't right. know those guys, but they probably weren't thinking about, hey, I'm doing this to grow my brain. This was a byproduct where this is a much more, you're aware and saying, I'm trying to grow my brain and use more of it to, to live the life I want to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you imagine, you know your heart and lungs are required for you to do things in life and you want to have them be as healthy as possible and it's capacity building to do that. What about this, right? right. right. And it feels like this should be a positive thing. It's like, this is literally the most powerful complex thing in the known universe. Right. And why aren't we leveraging it? Why aren't right. we doing something with it? So that's really where we want to why, why do you think that is? But why, why do you think society sets in society, we haven't been leveraging? We do have all these, I mean, healthcare is an enormous business. It's big, you know, it's 20% it's of the GDP. And, and, but why is this absent, you think? Well, now just, you know, it's subjective opinion here, sure. but I believe that it all comes back to the fact that our brain is also the decider of what reality is. So it's very few people have a brain that would say, I think I want to work on myself, right? Because the brain is deciding what reality is. The brain is deciding what's true. And so it typically doesn't say, you know, I think I want to get better. It thinks it's great. Right. That's its job is to, right. so it's grading its own paper in a way. Yeah, so right. in many respects, you know, we're, we have biases because there's lots of advertising and social pressures to work out more and eat healthier, but there's just no, there's no bias out there saying, hey, grow your brain, make, you know, right, and, and, and work harder at, at that kind of growth and be smarter. Um, yeah, so, which is why probably some people look at you funny, like, what are you talking about here? Because yeah. you're, you're the only one, you're, you and Polaris are the only yeah. ones out here really pushing. 
Well, it's, there are people in this space, but it's more individual people, individual practitioners, um, a lot of whom are sidelined, a lot of whom are marginalized as, you know, kooks or wacky right, or like, right. well, I don't know, bring it or whatever. Right. But look, the great thing that I love about this is that this is science, the stuff I just showed you. Right. They can show you scientifically now that MRI exactly that your brain, that image we looked at, that your brain is actually, when that comes up on the screen, the image goes, the, the, the electrical impulse that goes from your brain to your memory center and then to your eyes. They can watch it and say, look, your brain is creating reality. That makes it now, oh, it's not an opinion. That's a fact. Yeah. yeah. And, and I suspect that this is right for entrepreneurs because for whatever reason, they are, in my experience, predisposed to try new things and they're open-minded and they're, um, uh, cup half full people, you know, that's what I'm looking for here. Uh, the, the cup half full people. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is something that's aligned with that type of thinking versus somebody who's very pessimistic and, and life sucks. And I, right. why, why try anything? Is that going to work? So. Yeah. And I think also um, to find out that you've accomplished everything you've accomplished so far with those limitations, you go, wow, what's right. possible? I mean, right. you talk about 10X or 100X. I mean, all of a sudden, the some of the things that were driving you to be successful were actually holding you back, maybe even from being more successful. Right. So what are some of the biggest changes you've seen when folks have gone through a process like this? Uh, well, the Institute is fairly new, yep. um, but I would say um, the biggest change is being able to take ownership of your life. Things that you had no idea uh, about. Um, and I'll give you an example of one of mine. Uh, so one example, working on with uh, Anna Birch, who's co-founder of this with me with the Polaris Institute is, what is my experience as an entrepreneur? And my experience as an entrepreneur was I had my own company, my name was on the door, right? Was successful, Inc. 500, all that. But I've come to realize one of my biases was that the company was about me. It was for me, because of me, and that was great. And it was successful, right? I mean, right. who would yeah. say that's not successful? Right. But now one day I went, wow, that means it was limited by me, to be me, right. right? Anything I didn't want, it couldn't do, which means it couldn't become its own thing. Got it. Something like Polaris Institute, it needs to be bigger than me. Got it. And so that's an entirely new thing I'm exploring. What does that even mean? I don't have any experience with that. My right. experience is blah, 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 right? So exploring that kind of thing to think, what is then possible for this versus what was possible for my company? Yeah, right. And so that's just one example. I'll, I'll give you another one. Yeah, keep going. One of the other things that I, we explore is you'll have responses to things, right? When things don't match up like that image, people have very, sometimes very visceral responses. Yeah. No way, yeah, right? right. Okay. Come on, <laughs> what are right. you doing? Okay, when you have that kind of response, that's an indication right there right. that you have some bias that's limiting you that right. you can't fix. Um, what you don't realize is that whatever that is for you isn't probably just affecting you. It's affecting yeah, everyone in your world, right? right? That's right. So everyone in your company processes what you need to, what your issue is. You right. come back with a great idea or you have a bad day. We're all dealing with that, right? right? Right. So if I just change my attitude, what does that free up everybody else to do? What does right. that change right. the dynamic? And even just 1% from 1% negative to 1% positive compound interest. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's a big deal. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot to really start seeing the needle. Move. Yeah. Yeah. And I, in the limited time I've had to, um, really understand this and put it in perspective and, and is inconsistent so far that I've been, that 1% does matter. And, I, mm -hmm. and I've seen it. And it's certainly an awareness perspective for me now that it's mm -hmm. even being aware. Just noticing. Well, noticing. There it is again. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And one of the things that you said, and you and Anna said um, in, the, uh, in the retreat was, don't be hard on yourself or be gentle. Was it, be, be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Yeah. And, um, that's so true because I think, you know, particularly as an entrepreneur, you push so hard and people are, you know, they, some people view stress and, and pressure as good things mm -hmm. to, to drive them. And, and, and maybe there's some, there could be some value to that. And I'm sure at one point in my life, I would have said there was, yeah. right? You know, yeah. but now I, I really, the perspective of, of don't be so hard on yourself, you know, and, and, and be deliberate what you want and don't beat yourself up. Um, mm -hmm. because you're not where you want to be is really, it's like, in my opinion, the, the first thing to around the where is, you, you know, in order to make progress where you want, you know, I don't want to come home 
already frustrated because I know I'm walking into a, a stressful environment because kids just got home and everybody's trying to do homework and dinner. You know, I need to change that bias myself. Mm -hmm. I'm just contributing to it. You know? Right, and, right. And, and versus leading away from it. So, yeah. Um, could you spend two minutes or some, you know, because you kind of blew through that. This okay. has been a five year yeah. window for you. Yeah. And, and this is science based. And I know from our conversation, you've put a ton of time at yeah. this. And, yeah. and the, and so, can you talk a little bit about this, in part, not only your own journey, but like just the roots of this and how big it really is and how this is much bigger than what it seems like? Yeah, it's. Um, so as I said, it began with me just kind of exploring that and then starting to think about what what mental issues am I wrestling with that I want to change and are they changeable? And just coming across, there's some great books out there. If people want to read Lisa Feldman Barrett's book, um, that one was transform transformational for me about the science behind how our brains literally create emotions for us, uh, what the value is of them, why we create them, how, they, how they're variable, et cetera, and so on. Um, so that was really, uh, Kind of the first step for me to realize, wow, there's something here to build a process on. And then I think it also comes back to me, um, to to EO, right? I mean, EO is a community of people working on a thing, and in this case, mostly it's business or being an entrepreneur. And uh, that idea of working alongside other people working on the same thing is like, wow, if I was doing that, what if other people were doing that? What's possible? And um, and then the last the thing for me is this idea of reaching some finish lines in life and realizing that was. Huh? Okay. Yeah, right, right. Um, so the biggest one that I took on a couple of years ago was was anger issues, right? I had a, I had a whole which you can relate to. You've probably been in the room with me a couple of times, <laughs> a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> and what I what I've come to realize that you know you have to dig into it. What is this? Where does this come from? What's the value of this? And that's the thing when you talk about being generous with yourself. Whatever emotional response you have that feels negative, there's a benefit to it. You do you do that because it was beneficial or not. Yeah. And in my case, I came to realize that anger for me was about overcoming, which was about not being defeated, which was about, you know, getting around obstacles. And that served me when I was younger because I did have to overcome. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's a point at which you've overcome that. Right. Right. <laughs> now you're not. So what, what I realized I was doing was continuing to create things to overcome. Everything had to be a problem. Everything had to be a challenge. I have to. And so, um, I realized I was just creating those things in my right. own mind or having to have something to fight against or it wasn't fun or it wasn't interesting or it wasn't valuable. If I, if I had a success that didn't involve overcoming, right. that didn't count. It wasn't, it wasn't hard enough, right? right? So that was kind of like, oh, that was useful. And so the idea is to say, thank you. Thanks for that. That subroutine is in there. It was really <laughs> helpful when I was 18. Thank you for having that in there. But I think we're going to work on something new now. And so that idea of being able to recognize that and, and, and rewire it, and that's the be, being helpful, being gentle with yourself is to say, thank you. Yeah. It's there for a reason, may not be useful anymore. I want to uninstall that one or, right. or modify it. So that's really the one um, that I've really worked on the last couple of years. Got it. So we did have one question. I, I think I can get half of it right. The, the, the book title and author, so I think the title is Lisa Feldman Barrett. Lisa Feldman Barrett's book is a great one called How Emotions Are Made. I think we're talking really fast on this. So okay. Lisa yeah. Feldman Barrett and the title is How Emotions Are Made. How Emotions Are Made is the title. She has two books actually. That one is, if you really want to go deep, that's the deep one. Got it. The long, the science, scientist version that she wrote for the scientific community. Got it. Then she wrote a easier one to re digest, which is called seven and a half lessons about the brain or about your brain. Seven and a half lessons about your brain. Yes. Yeah. And that's basically seven and a half chapters on different topics. Got that's it. a good introduction. Got it. Um, and then she really is at the forefront now, this idea of your brain creating your reality, creating emotions, measuring it in the lab and, sh and sh explaining the value of it. And she has a lot of great examples um, of how it manifests itself in real life. And uh, yeah. How is the scientific community, the medical community, beginning to view this thinking? Yeah, wow. Um, I think she she talks about having some resistance. Mm -hmm. sure. um, so I'd let her answer that more right. than I should. Right. Um, but I think there, it goes in the face of some things that we've all believed for a long time. Biases that right, 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 right. biases. Um, she spends a lot of time in her books about this idea that there are set emotions. There is anger there, and you can recognize them by facial smile. It means happy, right? right? right. 
And she did completely disproves all that in the lab, right? That there is no such thing as a universal smile means happy or universal anger means frown. Um, so there's a lot of long held beliefs like that, that she's kind of up against herself scientifically. Yeah. Um, and she's, you know, goes through it all from a scientific perspective. Um, but I think there, my experience is we have four psychologists, three psychologists, one psychiatrist who are advising us on this program. Mm -hmm. And all of them are very, in fact, one was in that program that we went yeah. to two weeks ago. Yeah, right. They're very positive about this mm -hmm. because I think they're seeing it as well. They're seeing, and I think they're excited about the opportunity to say, let's make this better. Right. They're in that world of trying to help repair things, right. but wow, we could get better. And um, this is a path for that. So, right. Right. so far we've gotten good response. Yeah, and you know, and, and we're, under ultra confidentiality, so we can't talk about who was in the retreat with us. Uh, there was a, a person who not only was she a therapist, but she owned a comp company that had a bunch of therapists, um, not in Ohio. And, and it was interesting to watch her uh, really buy into this makes a big difference. And, yeah. you know, and so that was validating for me in many respects, because it was different than what she was taught the traditional basis. Right. I think it's a different, uh, a different thing to work on. That's right. Right. That's right. So it, it was great. And she, yeah. She's given us a lot of guidance on that. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, okay. So I do want to get to, I don't, I know you have another slide to go, but um, do you want to talk a little bit more about the Players Institute and what it's going to do and how you're going to do it? Sure. I mean, we're focused on team in some respects. Yeah. We're focused on two things. Um, it is a primarily in the long run, it's a community much like an EO community, right? People who are working on rewiring their brain for a better life, whatever that is for them. And it's the interesting thing is it's a different thing for every person, right? hundred percent. But the second part of the Polaris Institute is there's a Polaris process, which is the process you go through to rewire that thing. So it's basically there's one rewiring process. A process you guys figured out that works. It seems to work. Yeah, so that's far. Right, yeah. Right. And that's important. Based in yeah, science, right. based on, you know, right. Lisa's work, and then there's other other great people that have gone to work out there. If you want to read a great book that's a lot like very lighthearted, um, um, Scott Adams, Dilbert, cartoon guy. Yeah. He's got a great book called How to Lose It Everything and Still Win in Life. How to Lose It Everything and Still Win in Life. Yes. By Scott Adams. Yes. Okay. And his point, which we use in the institute as well, is it's about process, not result, right? You want to be someone who runs. You don't want to run a marathon, right? You want right. to be someone who is loving. You want to just like, you know, love. Yeah, right, right. So there's a more lighthearted book that really gets at a lot of the same sort of things. It's about just continuing to move down a path yeah. and not- It's directional. It's directional, not destination. Right, yeah, yeah. that's important. Yeah, that's one of the things we learned about two weeks ago. It's, it's very much, that's true. Yeah. It's directional, not destination. Because yes. you can start going down a direction, you realize that your destination may continue to change. Correct. There is no such thing as a final destination. It's just right. a direction. Yep. So, okay. Do you want to, this is the time, by the way, if you have questions to start posting your questions and be helpful. We're at about 1145 and, and we try to keep these to an hour and it's entirely possible that the battery has gone dead in the mouse. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I only have one other slide to put up. I think uh, let me share this again. And that was the slide about biases and money. Yeah. You know, we all think, well, I know what money is. It's really simple. Um, go back to this screen share. There it is. Share. So this is not a bias. The button is not working. No, this in reality, <laughs> the button really is not working. Yeah. Unless I hit it hard. That's it. I have to hit things harder to get my anger back. Share. Share. Uh. Okay, there you go. I think there's one more slide here uh, that we'll get to. Right, so here's an example of, as we've worked with people, 25 things that are real about money, mm -hmm. none of which, all of which are real, none of which are real. Correct. Yeah. And my favorite is just the two first ones, right? Taking risk is how you make money. Taking risk is how you lose money. money. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. right there. That's right. Both of those are, for some people, right. so you can't, right? Uh, right? right. But they're both true, they're both not true. That's right. And so you're gonna run into situations where you're involved with people in life who have very different things like that. And if you can get to the point where you both understand neither one of you is right, right. what is the, what is- Well, there's the, no right. There is no right. There's no right. It's right. just what right works for you. you. What works right. for you, you know? And yeah. It, uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I often wonder, I hope she's not listening, but my mom and I are 
our biases are so unbelievably different from each other. And I know, I don't know, I perceive I know where hers come from, right? Uh, and I don't know why mine are so different, but the, the issue of money, the issue of uh, critical conversations, the issue of risk taking, mm -hmm. we are just on different, our biases are wildly different. Yeah. Um, now, she's super happy and lived a great life, you know, and so I, hers aren't wrong. Right. You know, right. And um, they would, wouldn't work for me, but it's, it, it's all biases when yeah. it's all said and done. Well, and also these things work for you for a while and may not later. Right. Yeah, right. As you know, in the financial yeah. advising world, right. risk may be something you want early. Yep. You may not want it later. Right. But if you're really wired in, got to take risk, got to take risk, got to take risk. Right. And can't let go of that. Right. Right. So that's an example right there. It's something to rewire over the course of your financial life. Okay. You know, all the, not all, I do, I do, uh, having purchased cryptocurrency myself <laughs> and that whole experience and how unregulated and simple it is, it does make me wonder how many people, when I was the first time I did it, like, wow, this could be super addictive for folks that, mm -hmm. are, that love risk, right? Love like this, 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 this is dangerous, uh, for some people. So, yeah. um, okay questions at this point in time. I don't see any other ones in our box right now, but again, this is the time to ask questions. Oh, here we go. Can you see that this time? Yeah. How would I go about identifying these biases about money and what should I do if I have them? Well, so, okay. So, so go ahead. How would I go about identifying these biases yeah. about money and what should I do if I have them? That's the question. Yes. So you have them, right? Just you do, right? We all do. We have biases about every single the mouse, the house, the, the lights, something. So you have biases about money. You have to first just assume you do and get to know them, right? Become comfortable with them, become okay with them. They are part of you. They're not good. They're not bad. They may create emotional situations for you where they don't line up with what's happening or what other people think or what you wish that's where you can recognize this. That's the indication. Um, so I would say three quick examples of how you can identify where you have biases that are challenges for you, that are issues. Because you have biases in everything. Right? Right. Bias in this bottle of water. Right. First of all, anything that feels absolute, must, can't, won't, aren't able to, never, always. Got it. Anytime you use that word, any of those words, there it is. Got it. We did a little exercise together two yeah. weeks ago where just start talking about an issue yeah. and the other persons who we can't see our own biases, right. right? Start talking about this bottle of water. And within seconds, I will say things that's always must, I wish, you know, couldn't be. Right. And you'll, you could, we start, we just right. wrote them down for each other. Right. You can right. easily see someone else's Correct. because they say those kind of words. The second one is if you think someone else's view of the universe is absurd, stupid, dumb, like what, come on, there's right. no way, right? Um, and especially if it creates an emotional response for you, you feel right. your heart racing when they're saying something, right? Right. How is that right. happening? Right. right. It's, it's not like they have some laser beam they're firing at you. They're just saying words. I mean, that You're... didn't happen during the election last year, did it? <laughs> <laughs> it happens so much in the right. world today. Right? right. Now, I think that's a whole different topic. I think a lot of people take advantage of that to stir up uh, ratings and I deliberately deserve it because if you don't recognize that you're biased, got it. People can play on that. I see. Right. That's interesting. Right. It's interesting. So if you're not aware of your own biases, people can use them against you, like like a poker tell. Right. Yeah, sure. Randy's easy. All I got to do is say X, Y, and Z, and he'll fire it up, and he'll do the thing I need him to do, or he'll quit, or whatever. If people can read you, right, and you can't read yourself, right, right. So this is it's actually talking about reading yourself. Interesting. Yeah. And if you think of it like poker tells, right? That's a tell is a physical response for an emotional reaction, right? Yep. See the cards. You have eye twitch. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Scratch your ear. Yeah, or whatever right. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can start to recognize your own and go, oh, there it is again. That's interesting. You'll see patterns, right? You'll start to see things like, wow, a donut feels just like changing the channel on the TV, right? You'll see weird combinations because yeah, right. you'll start to recognize that response, that feeling. We talked the other day a lot about go into some emotional thing you're thinking about, problem, whatever, and explore it. What, what does it taste like? Yeah. What does it feel mm -hmm. like? What shape is it? If you can give it real feeling, right. and you can see that again come up later. It's like right. the thing you feel in traffic is the same thing you feel when no one responds to your email, whatever, right? You'll see patterns. You know, it's funny uh, or interesting that 
in that particular topic, the imaging uh, and the smell. So um, when we were going through the exercise, I picked something that was for the moment seemed fine. But as I've thought about it more and more and specifically around exercise, um, the, uh, I think about my grandfather, which I, has a very positive um, mm. and fun mm. experience for me. Like, you know what? It would be fun to go swim with him, whatever. And, and so like, it's just, it, it just that, that little tiny tweak has made it, I've swam more and, and done yoga more since the, that uh, uh, retreat. And I, that's that my grandfather image conjures up and I was fishing and, and I was like, okay, that's fun. And that's yeah. what I want. And yeah. so I, I know going and doing yoga and swimming is gonna lead me to more fun in life, so. Yeah, so you started attaching those yeah. things from rewire it. It was right? easy actually, once I had some time to step back and like, that was one of the best times of my life with, and with, with him, you know, and like, I just, just attach, attach my grandfather's image and our experience together with the idea that doing yoga and swimming is fun. So yeah, it's awesome. Uh, one quick note on that: there's a phrase Lisa uses it, for example, uh, that is uh, um, neurons that fire together wire together. Neurons that fire together wire together. So two things that happen together become attached to each other in your mind. Got it. So the more you do that you will always think of your grandfather while swimming. It'll just become a thing yeah. and it'll become natural and it'll just be attached because right. literally those two neurons are firing at the same time. They're like, oh, you did it too? Okay, we got to connect. Yeah. That's the physiology. Is that what happened to Browns fans all those years? Browns are losing. <laughs> <laughs> they scored. Doesn't matter, you're up 30 the points. Fans, but... <laughs> you know that the Browns can score a touchdown and that's negative. Well, and now they score too soon. Yeah, right. like yeah. There's definitely some things that required cross fire. Exactly. We have a second question. And does the review process become automatic at some point, or can you fall back into old patterns eventually? Rewire. Yeah. yeah. Rewire. Um, yes. So the, the last step of the Polaris process is what we call embodiment, where it's natural, it's normal. So it's it's a thing you do without even thinking about it anymore. You don't think about how to ride a bike or, or use a fork. And so let me use my anger example again, right? So I had a big issue in traffic. Uh, a lot of people used to need lessons on the freeway from me. And that doesn't happen anymore. And in the beginning, it was me recognizing, oh, okay, no, I'm not. And then attaching and then changing, changing some physical routines. Uh, my biggest uh, savior has been the cruise control that stays back automatically mm -hmm. for people, right? I never run up on anyone behind them anymore. And I find, oh, I'm only doing 52, oh, whatever. Right. So there's lots of tools and techniques, but there was a point at which I went, you know what? It's not that I'm not getting angry anymore. It's, it feels to me like they've all started driving okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's right. the point where like, okay, good. That one's wired in now. Right. It wasn't that I'm constantly fighting it, fighting it, and fighting it. You're working and working, just like the running thing. There was a point at which one day I was just running, I was running, I'm like, hey, I'm doing the new thing. Right. And I didn't have to think about it. That's when it's wired in. Yeah. And the last piece of that, the crazy part is, is that once that happens, you're running a new way, you're driving a new way, you don't see it anymore. Right. Right. Other people see it. Right. This is where you and I talk. Yep. You're yeah. like, you're so different. I'm right. like, I don't feel different. Right. I just right. feel like everyone's not really making me mad anymore. Exactly. But that's, that's I feel like everybody else started acting okay, but that's not true. Right. Because they're all the same. That's right. That was a conversation we had two weeks ago was was that like, you seem like you're happy all the time. And, and Bill's like, I feel exactly the same. I feel like everybody just stopped being yeah, it's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's in the end, that's where you're trying to get you. Now, it can be a long ways for some things that are a sure. big thing. Yep. Or it yep. can be really simple, right? right? This idea of you attaching your grandfather's swing might right. be quick, yeah. pretty quick. Exactly. You're not yeah. overcoming a big thing. No. It's an edit, it's a positive, you're going toward it. Right. So, some of them are fast and they're not. But that's the idea when it's just automatic, you don't think about it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, oh, one more question. Are there steps to follow to rewire? So, that, thank you for the question. Um, it, it's 1153. And so I think what I'd like you to do mm -hmm. is talk a little bit about, um, and we answer that question yeah. by way of explaining what, how to engage with the Polaris Institute sure. and, 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 the, and the thing that it's, it's fairly, I mean, it's simple, but there's a lot to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was three days, right? Right. 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 <laughs> it's three days to learn the entire process. Right simplified it is identifying what you want to change and repeating it like any other exercise right it's think of it the same as if you wanted to have six pack abs to turn it up right uh screenshot up, um it, or or you know or be in a better aerobic shape right. right well okay i need to figure out what my plan is going to be what does that look like when i get there 
And then I've got to keep repeating it and I got to find ways to keep it exciting and interesting. It's the same exact thing. That's the short version of the process. We have four specific types of activities we recommend everybody do. And you can do this whether you go through our process or not. If you want to really rewire your brain, you need to have one of each of these four kinds of activities, some sort of uh, external tool process support, right? Take the donuts, out, put the carrots out, right? Or, you know, put your shoes in the way of the door or, you know, those are calendars, reminders, journals. Those are external tools to help encourage that behavior. James Clear does a lot on this in his Atomic Habits, great stuff. So that's another book if you're interested in change is Atomic Habits by James Clear, local Columbus guy. Um, so external, internal is another one. Internal exercises, which are capacity building. Mental exercises, what is it you wanna do, right? You're doing that thinking about your grandfather with swimming. Boom, 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 repeat it, repeat it. Just like a calisthenic at the gym. When you do push-ups or lift weights, you're not really trying to become a great weightlifter. No, right. Some people we know are, but most yeah. people are not. Right? Yeah, right. You're trying to do that so that you have the capacity to act differently in regular everyday life, more strength, more stability. It's the same thing. You're gonna do some mental practices, practice focusing on being here now or whatever. We have a whole catalog of those things, but you're really doing that to build capacity to make change. The last two are expression and impression. Get something from inside of you out. This is one a lot of people have difficulty with, but if you're naturally a journaler or something like that, that's great. We share in forum, we share our yeah. experiences. I write music. It's one of the things I'm doing to explore and get something onto paper. Uh, and then impression, which is learning and reading. We're all pretty familiar with that. So right. something of all four of those is really the way to hit your brain in all four of the areas. Yeah, and in, in, in my experience going through this, it really, it has to be all four. Yep. And um, usually one or two are easy for you. And the other ones are like, that's really alien. I that's don't know right. what it means to express, or I don't know what it means to that's right. internal. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think the other piece of it, which is new right now, but this the community, I think be, yep. surrounding yourself with folks that are going through the same journey as you are, because it is hard to explain initially to folk, you know, people. Mm -hmm. and, not that that really matters, but you want to, again, simple, you want it simpler. And so, um, you know, being part of a community, that was probably one of the um, best things for me in the retreat was, again, I, I, I know Bill, I guess I didn't know one other person, but um, I didn't know anybody else. And just like sharing the experience we were going through mm -hmm. and what, uh, you know, so-and-so was experiencing, like that was helpful to me. So like, oh, like it's another data point for me to, to, to learn and like hadn't thought about it that way. You yeah. Know? Um, so it's, it's, um, but yeah, I, I mean, the short answer I would say is uh, contact Polaris Institute. Bill at Polaris <laughs> Institute.net. Yes, right. We have, we'll we have say it again. Bill, Bill at Polaris Institute.net. Yeah. And we have a website up at Polaris Institute.net. It's very basic at this point right. because we're really focused on building content behind the scenes. And it's really a, building a community of people working on this, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so somebody's, oh yeah. So we want a book of, a, send us a list of different books and resources that we talked about, including the Polaris process. So yeah, what we can do mm -hmm. is um, we'll have Annie send out, and Annie, again, thank you for helping yeah, yeah. with this again. Yeah. Very much appreciated. Um, we can send, uh, Bill, Bill will create a list of yeah. resources yeah. around books and also some more information about the Polaris Institute. Um, I, you know, and again, we didn't, haven't rehearsed this, which is true to my normal style. Um, the, the Blue shirt, no rehearsing, <laughs> I'm catching your, I'm catching your bias. Exactly. You know, it, so we were the first people to go through retreat and I'm really thankful I was because you're seeing the evolution of this. And so I think being early in the process mm -hmm. is pretty exciting and, and the feedback loop is instant and quick and and you're talking to the folks who are driving the bus on it. So um, yeah, so that's it. So if there aren't any other questions, then I think we're gonna sign off here and I don't see any more coming in, uh, but we will send you more information and really appreciate you joining us today. And if you're thinking about exploring this journey, I, I, would, I would take action because it's, 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 it's a journey, that's what it is. So thank you very much. Thanks.